Elm trees are an essential part of the forested landscape in Sweden. They are appreciated species in urban areas because they tolerate stress such as drought and because they provide the much appreciated shadow in urban areas. Elms are also very important for the biological diversity, both in cities and in forests. Studies have shown that elm trees harbor over 250 species, including many red-listed species that depend on elms to survive. A healthy elm can live up to 500 years, but if it gets infected with the Dutch elm disease, a large tree can die within a few months. I'm Johanna Witzel and I'm a researcher here at Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. I have been working with Dutch elm disease since 2007. Dutch elm disease is caused by two fungi, Ophistoma ulmi and Ophistoma nova ulmi, which have been traveling around the globe. Ophistoma ulmi was recognized as a new disease in the Netherlands in 1990 and it was spreading throughout Europe. By 1940s its incidence declined but the more aggressive Ophistoma nova ulmi spread to Europe from North America, replacing Ophistoma ulmi. Dutch elm disease spreads with bark beetles. In the end of the summer, the beetles lay their eggs under the bark of the dying elms. The larvae overwinter under the bark, and when they develop into young beetles in May, June, they fly to feed in the twig crotches of the healthy trees, carrying the spores of the fungi in their bodies. The spores then infect the trees and the disease cycle continues. In some cases, the infection can also spread through root contacts. The fungi grow in the xylem vessels of the trees where water and nutrients are transported. The tree tries to defend itself by clogging the vessels. This reaction stops the transport of water and nutrients, causing the leaves to wilt and the whole branch to dry out. In southern Sweden, there are only few adult elms left and the disease is spreading northwards. And cities all over Sweden and elsewhere in Europe have been forced to cut down their beautiful elm alleys and nice shadowy areas created by old adult elms. Several methods have been tested to fight the disease. The first reaction is usually to cut and destroy the sick trees. In the long term, this method usually fails to stop the disease. A more sustainable solution is to try to increase the resistance of elms through breeding. Some tree individuals may show resistance to the Dutch elm disease and they may be used in breeding of elms with improved resistance to the disease. These hybrids can be used as city trees, but they are not an option for large-scale forestry or nature conservation. We have found some, some fungi that can produce chemicals that the Dutch elm disease fungus doesn't like when we grow them together in, in the laboratory. And we hope that we could uh, use these fungi to develop um, models or products even to control Dutch elm disease. We have been working together with a Spanish group of researchers who work with the Dutch elm disease and they have a collection of uh, elm clones which show different resistance uh, and or tolerance against the disease and we have used these clones, these trees, as a source of fungi that we are then studying more carefully. I am uh, uh, Juan Antonio Martin, I am associate professor at uh, Technical University in Madrid. The situation is that elms were formerly a dominant species in riparian forests in Spain. Uh, they were also very used in uh, urban forestry, in squares of the towns, so in the streets, parks, and nowadays they are not used anymore because of Dutch elm disease, and they almost uh, uh, disappeared. Endophytic fungi live inside the trees, and they may help the trees to resist stress caused by drought or disease-causing fungi. We found that some endophytes were frequent in elms that show good resistance against the Dutch elm disease. Our collaboration with uh, Johanna's group uh, started with endophytes and we isolated different uh, types of fungi from healthy elms, elms that are not uh, affected by the disease. Working with endophytes from resistant trees, we found that several of them show antagonism when they are cultured together with the pathogen. So they show big antagonism against uh, Ophiostoma novulmi, against the pathogen. 
So that genesis will, has not disappeared and will not disappear in the future. But uh, if we can select a wide variety of resistant trees, we can start um, restoration activities as we have started uh, some pilot restoration in Spain. And probably the pathogen will not be able to uh, kill those trees. To find long-term and sustainable methods to get Dutch elm disease under control is a challenge, but we develop new knowledge all the time. This allows us to be slightly optimistic of the future when it comes to conserving the elms.